Hey folks, Aldo here. For those who may not know me, I'm a ZTM alumni who went from absolutely no tech background or experience to becoming a full stack developer. And now I made it my mission to help others strive and succeed in their own journeys. Today we're going over something crucial for anyone who spends time online, cybersecurity. More specifically, we're gonna talk about the five common cybersecurity threats that you should be aware of. Understanding these threats is key to protecting yourself and your data in this increasingly interconnected world. Now, let me just clarify something. The information in this video isn't just meant for cybersecurity professionals. It's meant for anyone who uses the web, whether you're shopping online, managing your finances, or just browsing through social media. Knowing about these threats will help keep you safe. But we won't just stop at identifying each threat. We will talk about ways that you can prevent each one of them. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we have phishing. Phishing is one of the most common and dangerous cybersecurity threats out there. It's a type of social engineering attack where attackers trick you into providing sensitive information by pretending to be a trustworthy entity. And before you ask, social engineering attacks really just boil down to manipulating people into breaking normal security procedures. It's more about exploiting human psychology rather than breaking into computer systems directly. Here's an example. Imagine that you receive an email that looks like it's from your bank asking you to verify account information. You click the link, enter your information, and boom, you've handed over your data to the cyber criminals. And this doesn't just happen in emails, it can happen through SMS, social media, and even phone calls. But don't worry, here are some ways that you can protect yourself from phishing. Number one, verify the source. Always check the sender's email address or phone number. If it looks suspicious or unfamiliar, don't trust it. Number two, look for red flags. Be cautious of emails or messages with urgent requests, spelling errors, or generic greetings like dear customer. Legitimate organizations usually address you by name and have professional communication. Number three, don't click on suspicious links. Hover over the links to see the actual URL before clicking. If it looks suspicious or if it doesn't match the official website, don't click on it. Number four, use multi-factor authentication. This adds an extra layer of security, making it harder for attackers to gain access even if they have your password. And number five, install and update security software. Use reputable antivirus and anti-malware software and keep it updated. This can help detect and block phishing attempts. Next up on our list is malware. Malware attacks are any type of malicious software intended to cause harm or damage to a computer, a client, a server, or a computer network. And it comes in many forms, including viruses, worms, trojans, and even ransomware. Many people don't remember this, but in 2017, there was one of the biggest ransom attacks ever, WannaCry. It spread rapidly across the globe, encrypting hundreds of thousands of computers, demanding a ransom to unlock the data. Now, I don't know about you, but 2017 to me wasn't that long ago. Or maybe it was, and I'm just starting to feel old. But anyways, this attack served as a wake-up call, showing us how vulnerable we can be to different malware attacks. But don't worry, I have a couple things here that you can do to protect yourself. Number one, use reputable antivirus software. Install a trusted antivirus program and keep it updated. This helps in detecting and removing malware. Number two, keep your systems updated. Regularly update your operating system and software to patch vulnerabilities that malware could exploit. Number three, avoid downloading from untrusted sources. Only download software from reputable sources or official websites. Number four, be cautious with email attachments. Don't open attachments from unknown senders. Even if it appears to be from someone you know, verify it first if the attachment seems suspicious. And number five, enable firewall protection. Use a firewall to block unauthorized access to your computer and network. Following that, we have man in the middle attacks. These attacks occur when attackers intercept communication between two parties to steal data or to inject malicious content. Some common man in the middle attacks include DNS spoofing, Wi-Fi eavesdropping, and even session hijacking, among many others. A famous example of a man in the middle attack is the Equifax breach in 2017. Equifax, one of the three largest credit history reporting companies, had a man in the middle attack that exposed over 100 million customers' financial data to criminals over many months. Man, 2017 was a tough year for cybersecurity. Now, if I'm being honest, man in the middle attacks are a bit tricky and hard to detect because everything looks normal on the surface. But don't worry, we have tips that you can follow to protect yourself. Number one, use HTTPS websites. Always check for the padlock symbol and HTTPS in the website address bar, indicating a secure connection. This ensures that your data is encrypted during transmission. 
Number two, avoid public Wi-Fi for sensitive transactions. Use mobile data or a secure network when performing sensitive tasks like online banking. Public Wi-Fi networks are often less secure and more vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks. And number three, consider using a VPN. A VPN encrypts your internet traffic, making it harder for attackers to intercept your data. It's a great way to add an extra layer of security, especially when using public Wi-Fi. And that brings me to our sponsor of the day. No, I'm totally kidding. We don't have a sponsor of the day or VPN sponsorship. I just noticed that a lot of YouTubers have VPN sponsorships. Thought I'd make a joke out of it. Yeah. Next up are SQL injection attacks. These attacks involve inserting malicious SQL code into a query, allowing attackers to access and manipulate databases. SQL injection attacks can be extremely damaging because they allow attackers to bypass authentication, access and modify data, and even execute administrative operations on the database, which is just what? For example, in 2008, a cyber attack on Heartland Payment Systems, a major payment processing company, exploited a SQL injection vulnerability that exposed over a million credit card and debit card transactions, resulting in one of the largest data breaches in history. And don't get it twisted, this type of attack isn't just a headache for large companies. Small businesses with poorly secured websites or individuals running personal blogs or e-commerce sites can fall victim to this attack. But as always, here are a few things that you can do to prevent it. Number one, use parameterized queries. Ensure that your SQL queries are parameterized, which helps prevent the insertion of malicious code. Number two, validate user inputs. Implement strong input validation to ensure that only expected data is processed. Number three, limit database permissions. Restrict database access to only what is necessary for each user or application. Number four, conduct regular security audits. Regularly review and test your systems for vulnerabilities to stay ahead of potential threats. Last but not least, we have denial of service or distributed denial of service attacks. These attacks aim to overwhelm a website or service with traffic, making it unavailable to users. Now you might be wondering, what's the difference between the two? Well, in a denial of service attack, a single machine is used to flood the target with traffic. In a distributed denial of service attack, there are multiple machines distributed across various locations, making it much harder to mitigate. These attacks can disrupt online services, cause significant downtime, and even lead to big financial losses for businesses. A notable example of this is the 2015 attack on BBC's website. The BBC experienced a massive distributed denial of service attack on New Year's Eve, which caused all of its website and services to go down for multiple hours. To protect against denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks, here are some steps that you can follow. Number one, use rate limiting. Implement rate limiting to control the number of requests a server accepts over a certain period. Number two, employ DDoS protection services. Use services specifically designed to detect and mitigate DDoS attacks. Number three, ensure network redundancy. Distribute your servers across multiple locations to reduce the impact of an attack on any single server. Number four, monitor traffic patterns. Regularly monitor your network traffic for unusual spikes that could indicate an attack. And number five, create a response plan. Have a clear action plan in place to respond quickly and effectively if a DOS or a DDoS attack occurs. And that wraps up our dive into five common cybersecurity threats to be aware of. Remember, staying informed and vigilant are your first line of defense in this digital world. If you want to learn even more about cybersecurity, or maybe you yourself are interested in becoming a cybersecurity expert, then I strongly recommend you check out Alexa's complete cybersecurity bootcamp course. It's about 11 hours long and will teach you everything you need to know to get hired in this field. I'll link it in the top right hand corner as well as the description down below. And lastly, if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and dropping it a like for more content just like this. As always, feel free to share your thoughts, questions, or even a personal story down below. That's it for me. Stay safe, stay secured, and I'll see you in the next video.